Hello, basement dwellers. We are back, and today we have a big show, silver and gold. We've got some bad, bad, horrible, scary news to talk about. But we also have some good news, and for silver and gold investors, this real bad news that we are going to talk about could actually be good news, real value in silver, real value in gold. But let's start what do you say? We, we're, we're optimistic, positive people, aren't you? I have a feeling, right? Basement dwellers, I know you. You're an optimistic person. Let's start with the good news. Let's talk about what is going on right now. And this is big, and it rhymes with big. It's the ZIG, Z-I-G. Have you heard about the ZIG? It is Zimbabwe's new gold standard, Zimbabwe's new gold-backed currency, and it's getting a lot of attention. And we're going to talk about why the Western countries might be a little upset about this. Take a little look at history and what the Western countries have done in recent years to other countries that tried to go on to a gold standard. But let's talk about what's going on with the ZIG. I'm going to read this to you. Uh, Zimbabwe's ZIG currency strengthens, okay, the day after it debuts, even as it royals commerce, okay? The whole reason why they're doing this gold standard, gold standard, can you believe it? This is huge news, right? And it's one little experiment, but it's not really an experiment. What am I saying? I can't believe I said that's not an experiment. It's going back to what has worked traditionally over time, and that's what the Zimbabweans want to do. They've had horrible currency crisis in Zimbabwe over the last decades. They've had unbelievable, crazy inflation. So now they're backing a new currency with gold, the gold standard. What do you think that'll mean for silver? You know what that'll mean for silver. Uh, banks, you, uh, you, this is from Bloomberg. Banks, utility providers still working. This is interesting. The IMF, the International Monetary Fund, says they need time to study the impact of the nation's new currency. I bet they do, right? They've come out and said in the past, I remember it was like about a year ago when I believe it was Zimbabwe, maybe it was Uganda, somebody, but they were like, anything other than the dollar and a debt-based system where we get to loan you money and put you into a huge trap is a bad idea, right? Zimbabwe is bucking the trend. Zimbabwe's new gold back currency, the ZIG, strengthened a day after its debut. It strengthened, even as it roiled commerce nationwide as banks, retailers, and utilities battled the switch to the new unit. It gained 0.2% uh, to 13.53 per U.S. dollar. Okay, it's gaining value against the dollar. Um, let's do this. Hold on. Let's go. Let's just go check and see what the world is saying. I went in and did a Google search on the Zimbabwe zig. And look at these top stories from Bloomberg. Zimbabwe zig rally enters third day. Three days in a row, it's rallying against the dollar. I wonder why. Is the dollar based? Oh, yeah, the dollar's not based on anything but confidence. Very interesting. Adds 0.4% against the dollar. That was just six hours ago. Uh, Reuters says Zimbabwe's new ZIG currency starts trading. Credibility doubts linger. You, the West is going to bash this. Market Watch, Zimbabwe's new gold-backed currency, the ZIG, is on a roll. That was just two hours ago. Zimbabwe uh, to publish info. This is interesting. Now they're saying they're going to publish inflation data. Not only in they're going to have it in dollars and in ZIG. And you know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen. Well, we know what's going to happen because didn't we hear it from the Federal Reserve? Well, the Philadelphia Federal Reserve just a few weeks back. What's going to happen is it's going to show that a gold-backed currency helps control inflation, right? Gold and silver backing money works. Did it work in the United States? What do you think? It worked in the United States. Now, we've talked about this ad nauseum. It worked for for a hundred years. It was the period of time when this country had its absolute greatest periods of growth and greatness, however you want to say it, right? Where we where, where, where average people prospered in the United States. Let me ask you a question, basement dweller. I'm 54 years old. You're probably around my age, right? Since we've been alive. 
Do you think that the middle class average Americans are doing better now that we're off the gold standard or worse? That's an easy question for us to answer, of course, right? The paper, Nixon taking us off the gold standard has not resulted in a good situation for average Americans. Let's say 90% of Americans, maybe 95% of Americans, I think in real terms are worse off now than in 1971 when we were indeed still on the gold standard, okay? Remember what the Philadelphia Federal Reserve said. The Federal Reserve, they put out a report last week kind of touting the potential benefits of a gold standard for controlling inflation, for helping people, average people like you and me maintain their wealth, okay? Um, let's talk about more good news. <laughs> for silver investors, gold investors. And by the way, the best news is you joined me here today. It's a big, big deal when you come to the basement. Thank you for being here, okay? It's me, it's you, it's our group. We're together. Please give this a thumbs up. You can subscribe to the channel. That's free. And super chats are always super appreciated. Thank you for being here. That's number one, right? We're together. We're a group. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the basement where you're a basement dweller. Let's talk about China. It continues, it continues, silver. What is this telling us big picture about silver? We know that Janet Yellen just went to China and told, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Janet Yellen went to China and said, basically said, stop making so many solar panels. Stop making so many electric cars. We know we bashed you 10 years ago for being the worst polluting country on the earth. We've showed pictures of rivers that were green and blue and everything else and all the coal that you're burning. But look, look, you need to stop. You need to stop with this, all these solar panels you've learned how to produce so efficiently and all these electric cars that are uh, a little bit better value than the ones that we make in the West. You need to slow down on that. Oh, and by the way, uh, China, you're using, you're sucking in all the world's silver. You know the story on silver and you know, we know the big picture, right? The amount of silver coming out of the ground from the mines is going down, 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 while at the same time, the demand is going up, up, up. That's in a nutshell. Us basement dwellers know all those statistics. Projected demand for solar, projected demand for anything electronic through the roof. Did Yellen tell them when she, I don't know, I'm just, we're just kind of putting the pieces together. Did Yellen tell them maybe when she wasn't, she was drinking beer. I saw a picture of her drinking. What is she doing? Here. Is, here, let's get Janet out for one second. Where is she? There she is. Can you <laughs> can you imagine her drinking beer and telling the Chinese to knock it off? But what is crazy about silver in China right now? Let's go. I got the latest and greatest. This comes from our friend, the Oriental Ghost. This is the price of silver in China. This was as of the close last night. Guys, this is so critical. The S up in the upper left corner, you see the AG, that's silver, and that's the Shanghai Gold Exchange, SGE. Go all the way over to the right, close price in US dollars per ounce, almost $31 per ounce. This is getting absolutely out of control. Go down to the third on the left, silver on the Shanghai Futures Exchange, $30.93 per ounce. The Chinese are sucking all the gold, all the silver out of the world. There's a huge, huge uh, situation developing right now where not only are they buying it off places like the COMEX and the LBMA, that, I mean, there's all types of theories about how this is occurring. There's also now direct relationships between Chinese refiners and gold, uh, silver miners uh, to avoid the big electronic exchanges altogether. But guys, they're paying $3 almost per ounce more for silver. I mean, that's the math, right? We're around $28, $2, $3, whatever it is, they're paying a huge, huge premium. <coughs> this incentivizes people to send, to buy silver in the West, right? Turn around and sell it for what? Almost 10% more in China? 
Can you see what is going on right now? This, this situation is huge. It's huge. And it's not, by the way, but wait, but wait, basement dwellers, you know, there's always more. There is more, right? Because we know. And when are we going to get? Who knows? Does, do you know? I can't do all this on my own, basement dwellers. Do you know the March numbers for India's silver imports? Because I don't. Maybe they haven't been published yet. But we, I got, I got Pat. We had Pat Holland on yesterday. He kept saying to me, "I got a little secret for you. I got a little secret for you. We do know that in February, the Indians, right? We we were just talking about China, but India imported 70 million ounces of silver." I know that's the 18th time I've told you that, but bear with me. It's such a crazy amount of silver. It's darn near 10% of the world's mining production for the entire year going to one country, India. That's not even counting what's going on with China with what we just looked at. All right, one more time. I want you to look over there on the far right corner. Closing price, U.S. dollars per ounce. $31. We're going to round up, right? Because we're accountants. $31 per ounce. It just gets crazier and crazier the more we look at this. Bad news. Warning. <coughs> if you were only here for good news, now we're going to start talking about the bad, bad, bad news. Hey, don't forget, at 11 o'clock Central, uh, 45 minutes from now, we have a new video. It's a premiere with James Anderson, where he goes through a lot of this stuff as well. Super smart guy. Super smart guy. James is, uh, gets a lot of respect in the precious metal sector, and it's a great video. Uh, again, it's a premiere that we're doing on Ron's Basement in about 45 minutes here at 11 a.m. Now, let's get into the bad news, okay? Let's just be briefly talk about big, scary. This is serious. I'm, you know, I like to joke around, but the wars that are going on in this world right now are scary and serious. And yes, you know, we don't want war. I could, I think you can, you and I can agree on that, right? Basement dwellers, but it is getting, but we need to pull our head out of the sand and it's getting scarier and scarier. Last night, Russia attacked the Ukraine with, I think, six hypersonic missiles. Those, those are the ones that are almost impossible to defend against. Blew up major power stations, major destruction in Ukraine. The, 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 the situation in Europe is getting, is getting very, very scary. Okay. Now, on top of that, can you believe if we told, if you and I had been talking five years ago, that we'd be talking about a war in Europe, basically between the East and the West, between Russia and in the West? Some people say we're basically at war, we're funding it, providing weapons. Anyway, I digress. It gets even scarier when we go to the Middle East, where there's this, we're all on pins and needles waiting to see if Iran is actually going to attack Israel. And then there's talk about the United States helping Israel defend itself. It is very scary. Our hearts and prayers go out to everyone in all of these regions, right? Um, now, if we're going to be, uh, if we're going to talk about this from a precious metals perspective, gold and silver benefit, I hate to use that word, not benefit, protect or they derive a lot of their value through geopolitical turmoil. And we have scary, bad situations going on, both in Europe and in the Middle East, not to mention a bunch of other potential powder kegs, China with Taiwan, North and South Korea. The list goes on and on. We are living in, do you feel it? I mean, I, I mean, do you, does it scare you? It scares me to think about this stuff. Like, this world that we're living in, just real quickly, let's go through the list, the big four right now, war in Europe, war in the Middle East, China and Taiwan situation, North and South Korea. North Korea is a big, powerful country. This is, uh, hey, we got 100 thumbs up. I'm going to ring the dinger here in just one second. It's a scary time. Did you ever think that we would be experiencing this, right? Is this why we hold precious metals? It's a big part of the reason why. Right? Unfortunately, the world hasn't learned how to get along yet. Hey, guys, we got 100 thumbs up. It's time to ring the, the ringer, the pocket pinger. Yeah, and let's do, we'll do, we'll stick with Big Tim's. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's from Big Tim the Silver Shire. Nice, beautiful silver round. 10 rings of the bell because we got 100 thumbs up.
five, six, seven. I'm supposed to smile when I do this. You smile too. Eight, nine, ten. All right, guys. What else is bad news? Big bad news, and I'm going to get to it next. I need to have a quick sip of coffee. Why don't we all smile for one second and all have a sip of coffee? Inflation, interest rates, screaming higher, okay? Stock market crumbles, mortgage rates going up. This all happened yesterday. But what critical information is it telling us for silver and gold investors? This is bad, right? Inflation going up. Interest rates went flying up, okay? Let's take a look. I've got something. Uh, you're going to be you're going to be floored. I was floored when I learned this last night. Um, uh, you're going to be floored by this. Let's go take a look at something very, very interesting. We're going to look at, in, at the interest rates, okay? We're going to go out to Yahoo Finance. This is, if you look up here where my cursor is, the 10-year bond yield, okay? Uh, let me refresh. Well, let me refresh real quick just to get an up-to-date number for us. Okay. So right now, we are at 4.57. This is crazy, guys. Let's go here. I like the little simple chart. Let's look at a one-year chart. The interest rates going up are bad for gold, bad for silver, right? That's what you've heard. Is that true? Is it? I'm, we're I'm going gonna to blow this whole thing up right now, okay? Let's go over here. This is one year. So right now where we are, as you can see, 4.57. If we go over here, this is the only time in the last year that we were above 4.57%. So from about September through, let's say, October. What was that? September, about one month, okay? But, but it gets even more interesting if we make that a maximum, okay? And we go back over here to where we are right now, guys. We've not been, we, we were, we, we, this is, this is the big deal. We've only been in an environment with higher interest rates than we have right now for basically what a month is what that chart showed me uh, in the last year. But it's actually we can go all the way back over here to 07, 06, which is what 18 years ago. We have only been in a higher interest rate environment than where we are right now. For what did we, did we discovered a month, month and a half, two months in the last 18 years. And really, if you go all the way back here, here's the last time where rates consistently stayed above that level. That's back in 01, 02. That's 25 years. The, the message here that we need to remember is that we, you know, we're, we're hearing about how, oh, you know, interest rates are going to go up and that's bad for gold and silver. Uh, guys, we're, we're in nosebleed territory uh, from the perspective of the last 20 years, okay? And rates can't go any higher. Remember, okay, the Fed, again, let's go back. I mean, look at this. Look at this. We've only been high. I mean, it, you go back, let's say, 20 years to get to a point where interest rates have been higher, okay? Do you, the, and, 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 <laughs> Look at look at the amount of government debt that we have. All right, okay. Let's let's go real quickly. I'm I know it's been a couple of days. We just need to check to make sure. Hold on. Let's go out and look at the U.S. debt clock here. Hold on. Hold on, because we're in this environment where we've not had higher rates over the last twenty years, and people are talking about rates going higher. Okay. Um, we're going to look at it quick. Come on. Here it is. Oh boy. I remember when it went to 34 trillion, 600 billion, just about a week ago. It seems like they're adding 10 billion or so or there, 34. We're, 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 we're now closer to 35 trillion in debt. And you're going to tell us, you're going to tell us that they're going to raise rates. Hold on. Hopefully you guys can, I'm going to show you one last time, right? That's where we are right there. See that, that horizontal line that goes across. That was the last time we were a little bit higher. And this is when it really stayed, was much higher. It's 25 years. So you're going to tell me, you're going to tell me they're going to raise rates. No, 
They can't raise rates. <laughs> rates are already high. We're already in nosebleed territory. Uh, the amount of government debt is out of control. And that's nothing. I mean, are, are, well, and on top of that, let's say you add corporate debt, business debt. On top of that, you add personal debt, credit card debt. On top of that, you add all the debt in the world. I got news for you, basement dwellers, right? There's more than the United States, right? The, I think total debt in the world, they're saying, is 300. The world financial system is already under great stress. It won't accommodate rates going any higher. And that's why gold and silver are staying where they are. They know what's going on. And I'm going to show it to you visually here in just one second. But guess what? So the Fed can't raise rates, right? Well, guess what? The Fed can't lower rates either. Okay. Everybody thinks they're going to lower rates. No, you know what's going to, you know what would happen? Little secret, right? They can't raise rates because there's so much debt, won't accommodate it can't lower rates because there's this little problem called inflation. And the Fed is losing its potency to fight against inflation because, because of the bricks, because the world is changing, because of what's called supply side inflation that has really very little to do with monetary policy and interest rates. We are in an untenable situation. I got to get them out. <laughs> There you go, guys. Do not open this box, right? Right? Because this guy, where is it? I used to have a screwdriver down here. This guy is is uh, is kind of screwed. I mean, that's just the reality, right? He's got his unicorn in there with him, right? His little unicorn. There it is. And he squeezes to make more money. Unicorn fart dust. And that's all he's going to be able to do. That's his only solution. Create more money. Print more money devalue the U.S. dollar, right? which will be nothing but double, triple. Are you ready for double, triple, double, triple rocket fuel for the price of silver and gold for the real value? We talk about that all the time. OK, inflation is coming and the Fed is impotent. I wrote this for you. So please listen. So it, it, oh, this is this is big. I'll, I'll leave him in his box. We got to remember something. Okay, inflation's coming and the Fed is impotent. We just covered. They can't raise rates. They can't lower rates. He's in a box, right? Okay, that's the last thing. Remember this. This is critical. This is critical, right? Nobody's going to tell you this except Ron from Ron's basement, right? The last thing that the Fed is going to say is that uh, we're kind of screwed. Okay, I think I can use that word on this channel. If that offends anyone, please send me an email. Let me know. In big trouble. That's the last thing. Remember the movie, The Wizard of Oz? And at the end of the movie, they figure out who the man behind the curtain is. And he's impotent. He's just, you know, it's, it's that's exactly, exactly the situation we're dealing with right now with the Fed. I'm sorry. I don't like it. I don't like the Fed. I didn't create the Fed, Right. I like what our founding fathers created for us. This thing called the United States Constitution, which explicitly says gold and silver are the only forms of real money. And we got people like Pat Holland and Daniel Diaz right now in the Missouri State Capitol trying to fight for you, Daniel Diaz, on a national basis, Pat Holland as well, to get these legal tender laws passed. This is not going to be a show about legal tender, but that's the answer, right? It's the Wizard of Oz. It's a con game. It's a con game, guys. That's all it is. This, where'd it go? I used to have one down here. Maybe it blew away. Let me tell you something. These things can blow away, right? This is a confidence game. And hey, it worked. I'm not, you know, I'm an American. I wish, if I could wish upon a star, right? I would wish that this little beauty, right? They are pretty. They're cool, right? I was brainwashed into liking these things. Give me a stack of hundreds. Oh, my eyes will light up. I wish it was still backed by real, something real, metal, something real, right? This blows away. Watch. See? It floats. It's magic, right? I mean, let me show you something. It's time for show and tell. Sit down. Take a drink of coffee. I'm going to show you something very beautiful. I'm trying to get it to come into focus. This does not blow away. This is a beautiful... American Silver Eagle. It will not blow away. It's real, okay? It's a con game, and the Fed is in a box. Um, and what this proves, and what we've been proven, this is also key, right? 
everything's been thrown out the window, right? Including this idea that gold and silver cannot go up in a rising interest rate environment. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about we're going to we're going you're going to learn something, and I'm going to make it so simple for you. You know those aha moments when you're like, wow, now it makes sense. If you don't understand this, and this is one of the key fundamental reasons why you should be investing in silver and gold. You're, I, I'm, I'm, my goal for you is to give you an aha moment here in a second. <laughs> aha, I'll do my best, but let's go check on the silver and gold price. Look, these are all short-term noise moves at this point. Okay, let's go out to Pimbex. Okay, let's have refresh. Hold your breath, guys. And okay, gold is up $4, silver down $0.05. Cents. Uh Yes, we have gold at $2,338. We have silver fighting for $28. $28 on the silver price is so critical, okay? I was talking with Coin Shop Chris last night via text, and he said, we got this fight going on for $28. Can we hold it? Will we build a floor? I said, I hope so, because I think that in a week or two, we're either going to be at $31, $32, or we're going to be down by $25. I think it's about 50-50. I'm just being honest with you. Uh, 28 is a critical level for the silver price. And let me tell you something. I got a secret. Once we get to 31, 32, it's going to do exactly what gold did. It's going to go write this down that on, uh, what is today? April 11th, 2024, Ron from Ron's basement said that once a silver breaks $32 per ounce, it's going to go to $40 an ounce within 24 days. Okay. That's going to happen quick. And we're going to be like, whoa, we got $40 silver, just like gold went above 2000, 2100. And when it made its break, moved up to where it is today. I could be wrong. Don't make any financial decisions based upon anything I say. But if you find yourself curious about wanting to buy some silver, gold, or platinum, come to this website. I, I believe you're seeing it right now. If my if my technology is working as, as, uh, as prescribed, it's called pimbex.com, P-I-M-B-E-X. They're an online bullion dealer. They're growing um, they have a, a business model that works, and one of their core values is to try to get as much metal into the hands of everyday average people like you, to give you more metal for your money. Now, that's what I found out when I worked with Pimbex. One of the basement dwellers told me, check out Pimbex. I checked out Pimbex. I read about Pimbex. I made a couple of purchases from Pimbex. I was very happy. What I found was that their prices were always the best, uh, their service was great, and they had everything that I wanted, the exact same products that I could get at some of the other big online bullion dealers. I think that if you do what I did, go out, check out Pimbex, you'll find what I found, but you need to find that out for yourself. Um, you can go to Pimbex.com and thank you. Uh, to Pembex for sponsoring the basement. They make this possible. All right, let's move on, guys. Real, have you heard this? Okay, now then don't let this scare you away. But everybody talks about how real interest rates are what are what uh, are what controls the price of gold. For you know, real interest rates. And what's a real interest rate? Here we go. Okay, this is interest rate. Okay, this is inflation. I'm going to hold it like this right now, okay? So right now, interest rates, the prevailing the prevailing interest rates are at about 5%. Inflation is about 3%. So to calculate real interest rates, you subtract inflation, that's about 3%, from the prevailing interest rate, about 5%. And you get a positive real interest rate, right? You take out what you lose to inflation from what you're earning on your interest. So if you subtract 3% from 5%, you get real interest rates are positive right now. That's bad. That's bad for gold. That's bad for silver, okay? Now, let's talk about how uh, how, how this situation can change. And all the, a lot of the silver and gold community is saying, oh, well, when, when interest rates, that's all we hear about. The Fed's gonna lower rates. It's all we've heard about for like, what, the last six months, right? The Fed's going to lower rates. When they lower interest rates and they come down, right, and then they go below the inflation rate, 
then we get negative real interest rates. Because when you subtract the inflation, right, this part here, you're losing. If inflation's 3% and the interest rate's 1%, well, you're losing 3% and only making 1%. That's good for silver and gold. But wait, there's more. Okay. Okay. There's another way that nobody talks about that these real interest rates can go negative, right? So if you have your inflation right here, and we've talked about this, inflation is not going anywhere. This is, let's say, I'm sorry, interest rates are not going anywhere. Interest rates at 5%, okay? And we have inflation still down here at 3%, right? If inflation goes up and gets higher, let's say to 8% again, and interest rates are still at 5% because the debt won't accommodate them raising interest rates. Everything blows up. Now, again, this is the other scenario. But wait, there's more. Bear with me. Real good news. But under this scenario, 8% inflation, 5% interest rate, right? You subtract the 8% inflation from the 5% return, you're at negative 3%. Very good environment. Now, what is the holy grail? What is the ultimate? The absolute ultimate situation. Think about this. Here we are right now. This is where we are right now. Interest rates, 5%. You can earn 5% anywhere at a money market, a short-term CD, whatever. Okay, Inflation's only 3%. Ooh, so you can actually come out ahead 2%. Real interest rates are positive. But if they both move at the same time, if we get inflation going up, which is happening and will continue to happen, inflation going up and the Fed, who's in a box, does have to cut rates a little bit, this is the holy grail. This is when this difference between inflation and lowering interest rates even becomes more pronounced. Negative real rate interest rates become even bigger. And you know what happens then? You want to know what happens then? I've told this story. It's been a little while, right? I have a neighborhood swimming pool here where I live in my neighborhood. It's wonderful. A little, it's like a watering hole. It's been there for 50 years. It's beautiful. People donate their time. Anyway, when I go to the neighborhood swimming pool, nobody, I mean, nobody wants to talk about silver and gold. Okay. So under this scenario, under this scenario, when you have in, inflation going up, 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 up in interest rates. Is that upside down? It is. <laughs> Sorry. Interest rates going down, down, down. About right here is when my neighbors start, uh, right here is when my neighbors start to wake up, right? They're like, inflation's going up. Interest rates are going down. My paper money, where did it go? It's on the floor where it belongs, right? <laughs> My paper money's losing value. What talk, talk to me. And everybody's going to gather around me in the swimming pool. You know, there's going to be a glow above my head. And, I, and they'll all be saying, tell us about silver and gold. Tell us, right? Yeah, sure. I will. You should have listened about three years ago. I could be wrong. Maybe they never will gather around me. But I think it's going to happen. Okay? I think it's going to happen. Um we got a lot more to cover, guys. It gets even more interesting from here. Okay, um, uh, but, but, but let's go. Let's all right. Let's talk about inflation quickly. And quickly, I've got something to show you. Show and tell time. Hold on here. Do 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 do. Proud as a peacock. Remember that. NBC, proud as a peacock. Maybe you don't, maybe you do. NBC News says, consumer price growth accelerated in March. Well, no joke. Have you been to the grocery store, the gas station lately? Adding to cloudy picture for the U.S. economy. Oh, no, I told you this was bad. Bad, bad. I'd shut this off. There we go. Okay. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Since the start of the pandemic, Americans have seen average prices increase more than 20% overall. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Despite this, economic growth in the U.S. rolls on because we've got Bidenomics. All right, let's go. I want to get right to, uh, here we go. We're not, yeah, I'm not going to bore you with all this. You know, you already know this. Inflation, blah, 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 blah. I've got it right here. Let me highlight this. But, and we like big butts, and it's a big butt. Greg McBride, Chief Financial Analyst at Bankrate, 
put the situation succinctly in an email following Wednesday's release. Drum roll. Drum roll. Okay. Drum roll. Mr. Bryan said, quote, there is no improvement here. We are moving in the wrong direction, he said. Inflation is going up, guys, okay? And the Fed, I'll say it one last time, cannot raise rates because the massive debt levels of the United States in general and the world will not accommodate it, okay? On paper, the US, US economies look solid. The unemployment rate has remained low, below 4%, because we all know the Bureau of Labor and Statistics puts out accurate numbers for the longest stretch since the 1960s. Stocks have been at all-time highs. The economy continues to add jobs. But since the start of the pandemic, Americans have seen the average price increase of 20% overall. Wrong. We're going to prove it to them. Again, one last time. Hey, this comes from my old buddy, Secret Sean. Not Secret Sean. Sean, my college roommate. Okay. And he wants me to say hello to his daughter, Neve. Neve, welcome to the basement. We get a lot of younger kids that, uh, believe it or not, which is very encouraging, that enjoy watching Ron's basement. So, Neve, give your dad a big kiss. Tell him it's from me. But he, Sean provided this. Guys, this shows just so clearly right now. Price increases January of 2020 through January of 2024. In four years, and I'm just going to go, we did this cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> Ugh, that, anyway, uh, it went from 99 cents to $1.50. I think that's like in a lot of those casserole uh, dishes that people make. Uh, butter. Let's look at butter. I haven't looked at butter. $4. Now it's only $5.50 for a pound of butter. Up 37%. Anyway, the average increase, uh, 46%. So they're trying to tell us that inflation. Yeah, right. No, we don't believe it. We don't buy it. OK, inflation is here to stay. OK, they cannot if they lower rates. Do you know what's going to happen to inflation? Right. Remember. Right. Remember over here, guys, remember, here's inflation. Here's the interest rates. If they lower interest rates, OK, maybe by one percent, let's say inflation goes whoop, up. There it goes. Do you see it? Watch. Whoop. That means inflation goes up super high. Wow, this is a break breakthrough moment for me because this is what everybody thinks is going to happen. Everybody thinks the Fed's going to lower interest rates. That will make inflation go up. And as inflation gets to 10%, okay, and interest rates are at 2%, let's say, or 4% or 3%, doesn't matter. Let's say they're at 3%. Okay, inflation, it keeps going off the screen. It keeps wanting to go higher. It can't hold this down, all right? And the value of the dollar keeps going on the floor. Anyway, inflation's up here, and we got three. That's 7% negative real interest rates. You know what that does for the price, the value of your silver and gold? That that probably, um, that makes, <laughs> we will have more people wanting to join us in the basement. I might just have to make it an exclusive for you that have been here from the very get-go, wanting to learn about what's going on. And, 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 and why can't they raise rates? Do you want me to show you, basement dwellers? Huh? I love you guys. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for subscribing. Most importantly, Seriously, thank you for being a basement dweller for these few moments. We get to hang out together. Uh, it's a big honor. Susie. Oh, Susie, I'm sorry. I don't I don't have Susie turned on. She is home today. She's back. Susie came back home for all of those of you that were concerned about that. She was not here yesterday. Susie, is your walkie on? Yeah, my walkie's been on. Oh, you want to say hi to everybody real quick? Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. I hope you're doing well and, and have a great day. Thank you, Susie. I got to tell you guys, she's probably one of the nicest people you would ever meet in your life. And maybe someday we'll have a Ron's Basement convention. I'm not planning anything right now, but I was thinking maybe I would rent that St. Louis has all these Catholic churches and they all have big basements underneath them where you can rent for wedding receptions. I thought it'd be fun for us. You have over 200 likes. 
Okay, thank you, Susie. Uh, they have a convention, or not a convention, a get together or whatever, uh, in the basement of a church, right? Or a basement of whatever. Uh, where was I? Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. I got to ring the cowbell, bell warning. And we know, okay, if you're at work, if you happen to work at Goldman Sachs or or uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, it's time for you to turn your speakers down because I'm going to ring the bell. All right. Uh, this is why. You want to know why? Hold on. This is why. Add the stage. All right. And here we go. This comes from this site called Vo, Vo, and then they stole my name, Ron Oy. But this is federal debt held by the public expected to rise. Federal debt held by the public. All right, here we are right now. And I thought this number was higher, but nonetheless, this shows right now 2024 <clears throat> debt as a percentage of GDP is almost, okay, almost the same as it was at the end of World War II. So we're right now at a debt level that we've never been at since we were uh, just completed what was the biggest war in the history of the world. But what's scary, guys, this right now, the Fed can't raise rates. We talked about it, right? The banks, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Remember, we've only been in a, an environment with interest rates this high for like a couple months out of the last 20 years. And we're going, if we're going higher and higher with this 10-year bond yield, uh, the stress that this is putting on the banks, I mean, we had three of the four largest banks go belly up, and I think rates probably weren't even as high as they are right now. And we have this commercial real estate wave of refinancings that need to come through where the collateral, which the loans were based on, is worth 60, 70, 50 cents on the dollar. Nonetheless, I digress. See my arrow? I believe you can see my arrow. That's right now. This is what's projected. And this is according to our government. This is like best. I, I think it more goes up like this, right? But this is just projected by 2054 that will be at like what? Well, here we can go down. Let's look. This is to give us some historical perspective. Debt as a percentage of GDP after World War II, 85% in the 50s. 57, 60s, 30. We got all the way down to 23% in 1974. Why did we have to go off the gold standard? Anyway, I digress. In the 80s, 30, 90s, 50%. In the early 2000, we were back to 35%. 2014, 70, 2024, we're at 100. And then it's projected to go to all the way to 165. The amount of debt cannot allow for, cannot accommodate for, can't handle, can't absorb interest rates going any higher than they are right now. We are in, we are really are in a doom loop. I'm sorry, I have to say it. I don't want to be, you know, scare you uh, or or be like, oh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. What's that guy's name? Johnny, John, what's, I forget, somebody, uh, anyway, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's not a, a good situation. Thank you, PWS, for Super Chat. Mind that. from Taiwan. Oh, from Taiwan? That's awesome. Uh, wow, that's awesome. I had a friend named David Liu from Taiwan. He was born in Taiwan. People from Taiwan are very nice. Um, they can't raise rates. Okay, what is CNN? Let's talk about gold, silver. All right, let's talk about uh, a very interesting little piece. Mainstream uh, media, okay? Where'd it go? Here it is. Oh, shoot. Hold on, guys. Let's bring this one up. And boom. Uh-oh. There we go. We're going to get rid of that. Everybody gives us pop-up ads now, huh? Okay. How do I get that boy? Oh, boy. All right. Here we go. Why gold prices are at record highs? It's all a bunch. Okay. Two, there's two big things we want to learn from this. Number one, Mainstream media is catching on. Okay, they talk about Costco in here. They talk about uh, the debt. They talk about blah, blah. Okay, we already know all that. So we're not going to bore you with that. The interesting part of this uh, article is toward the b bottom, toward the end. There's Costco. People's Bank of China bought all this gold. Have you heard that? Yes, you've heard that. A sign of the times. Uh, keep going down. Okay, hold on. Okay, 
Um, okay, here, this is the interesting part. So why is gold surging right now? Some investors are buying into the hype around gold bullion. See, it's just a bunch of hype. That's what the mainstream media wants you to think as prices rise, pushing them further up. On Reddit, right, proud gold buyers often post threads about their stashes. By the way, they also do this with silver on Wall Street Silver and the Silver Dijon Club, okay? Uh, then they talk about Costco, began selling bars online in August. We covered this yesterday. The company may now be selling. This this just floored me, okay? As much as $200 million in gold and silver each month. And again, my personal opinion um, is that if you're going to buy gold and silver, buy it from a specialist, okay? Buy it from somebody who that's all they do. Might I recommend, if you're going to do that and buy it online, that you take a look at Pimbex put them into the mix because they do an outstanding job of getting you the best price and the best packaging. Okay. Okay. Then it goes down here. This is where it's interesting. The accelerating frequency of Reddit post, quick online sellouts of product and the company's robust monthly e-com sales suggest a sharp uptick in momentum since the launch. People are waking up guys. Look, silver, if you know, I, I'm I'm cool and I keep mine off site, stored securely. I'm cool with how much silver I have. I'm telling you, could we see a silver shortage? Absolutely. I am I, I can't predict the future. Nobody can with hundred percent certainty, but I am so certain that I'm gonna be sitting down here saying, I didn't say I'm not gonna say I told you so, but I told you that we could quickly, and I mean snap of a finger, hours, days, there we could be back in the situation where there is no silver available for the retail investor. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying that with, with the supply demand big picture that we have in the market, coupled with the fact that now with instant communication, things like Reddit that they're talking about there, and even more importantly, the, the fact that you people can buy, you don't have to go to the local coin shop and wait in a big line to buy silver. You can hop online and buy tens of thousands of dollars. And that happened. That's happened several times, right? That happened a year ago right now during the banking, little banking crisis. It happened during COVID. I mean, guys, it can happen. It happened during the silver squeeze back in 2021. It's happened three times, and we're in a more precarious, think about it. We're in a more precarious situation right now, okay? Uh, Lindell said that trend followers and others jump on the rise in prices as the background begins to point to substantially higher prices over the long term. It's also worth noting that gold is a traditional asset to hold during political uncertainty. Thank you, CNN, the Children's News Network. Voters in more than 60 countries are said to head to the, head to the polls this year. That's interesting. Yeah, I hear that brought up, right? But we've got major elections going on, including, no way. Did you guys know that? There's a U.S. presidential election. That's why I, I, I read CNN. <laughs> There's a U.S. presidential election? What? Oh, my gosh. I better buy more silver and gold. Uh, that uptick in geopolitical and economic unpredictability underscores the precious metals stable value. Well, there we go. Our daily dose of the Children's News Network. Uh, there's a piece out that I need to read more about, but apparently TD Securities talked about the potential for a silver short squeeze. What? They must be watching Ron's basement. Hmm. We knew JP Morgan was joining us. We knew the Goldman Sachs was joining us, but TD Securities talking about a silver short squeeze. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay. Do you think there's a potential for a silver short squeeze? Right. It's kind of a, a, a word that has a stigma with it now. Like, oh, don't talk about short squeeze. Don't talk about silver short squeeze. Well, hey, guys, if any metal, if any investable asset out there, right, has potential for a short squeeze, I would think it would be silver. We just talked about how people can jump online and, and read the retail investment community, can wipe out the available inventory hours, days, right? Okay. 
But on top of that, don't forget, there is so much manipulation of the silver price on the COMEX, on the LBMA. It's absolutely crazy. So the potential, right, that these guys that have all these contract derivatives on the silver price could also help accelerate a short squeeze. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a real possibility. I'm not saying, I'm not predicting it for this week, this month, this year, but but it's a real possibility, especially with silver. I mean, the whole silver market is like, what, $1.6 trillion, all the silver in the world right now? I think all the gold in the world is like 10 times more. We saw what happened with gold. And we know that on top of that, 60% of the silver is absorbed by industry. So uh, that's that story. Let's move on. One more quick story, but a big story, and one that we are not real happy about. Uh, this comes from our friend J.P. Cortez, um, and J.P. has been on the channel before. Idaho governor, this is crazy, opposes gold and silver, vetoes a bill to enable protective holdings. Idaho, Idaho governor Brad Little, and I'd say he is little, uh, today vetoed legislation that would have enabled the Idaho state treasurer to protect state reserve funds with an allocation to physical gold and silver, sending a potentially alarming message to the state's mining industry and investors. This story is astounding on two levels. Okay, number one, all they wanted to do was to help uh, allow the state treasurer to protect some of the state's wealth by putting some of the money into silver and gold, okay? Um, guys, that's real. We were talking with Pat Holland and, and, uh, and Daniel Diaz yesterday, like these states, they have like their pension funds. What are their pension funds invested in? Bonds. What have bonds done? Ask a bank, ask anybody. Bonds have gone down, down, down in value. These pension funds are in a position where they could be like uh, uh, paying out more money Every year, and the actual principal balance of what they owe is going down. This would have just allowed the state to put some of their assets into silver and gold, okay? But what's even more astounding that this occurred, uh, yeah, it says right here, SB would have permitted the treasurer to hold 7.5% in state funds in physical gold and silver, so as long as the assets are maintained securely, in a depository specifically built for precious metals located within Idaho or a contiguous state or in an Idaho chartered bank or credit union. All they wanted to do, right, was put up to 7.5% of the state's assets, uh, treasury, into silver and gold. But what's crazy about this is, uh, is that Idaho is a big, major mining state. Here, Senator Hart said, Idaho is known as the gem state and was first settled by miners. Historically, a reliance on gold and silver is part of our state's DNA. Okay, that's what he said after Governor... 300 likes. 300 likes. All right, guys, I'm going to ring the gong. But this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. But the good news is this, right? The momentum continues. We had Wisconsin... Uh, they got rid of sales tax on silver and gold. We've got Tennessee that's fighting for some legislation. We have Missouri. Look, the important thing to remember here is that, sure, we're not going to win every fight when it comes to silver and gold legal tender legislation. We're just not. But we are winning fights. Think about this. I got news for you. We're not having um, uh, anti-legal tender legislation being passed state by state, right? What we're having is new good legislation being passed. It's not winning every time, but it is winning. It's chipping away state by state to give you, right, your ability to reclaim your right to use silver and gold as legal tender. I got to ring the gong. Who doesn't love the gong? The golden gong. I'll be right back. Let me grab it. Up, 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 up. Before I do that, let me remind you guys, you can go to ronsbasement.com. There's a 24-hour forum there. There's a giveaway going on. Our friend Big G from CT from Connecticut is running a giveaway uh, that you can start guessing the uh, or, or predicting the price of silver on July 3rd, but you don't want to start that until a week from, I'm sorry, not a week till Monday. Uh, yeah. 
on uh, tax day. Okay. All right. Here we go. Don't forget to smile, basement dwellers. Let's go check the gold and silver price. I know that my, my blood pressure is going up. And let's see where we are. Are we red? Oh, my gosh. Hey, good job, basement dwellers. Over the last hour, we made the price of gold go up almost $10 per ounce and silver by almost five whole cents. Where is silver? Hold on. Let's go back. 27. It is fighting for $28. Come on, silver. You can do it. Hey, guys, thank you for being here. Thanks for being part of the basement. This is an awesome community of people, but it's not possible without you. Okay. It is a big honor when you come down here. You're a good person. So many wonderful, nice people uh, that I've met and that have met each other. A lot of you have made great friendships uh, through the community, through the chats. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to find some really, really great people, really smart people. It's a big deal to me when you come here. Thank you. On behalf of myself, Susie. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's type eight. Oh, I almost forgot. Double forgot. I need to thank my sponsor, First Mining Gold. You can learn more about them at firstmininggold.com. They're a gold developer uh, based in Canada, but they have two multi-million ounce development stage projects in Canada. And of course, our friends at Fortuna Silver, fortunasilver.com, but they're actually more of a gold mining company now, although they do have two big silver mines that are still in operation. They've got uh, major operations in West Africa, gold-centered, and then they have a Latin American operations uh, with one big gold mine in Argentina, silver mine in Peru, and a silver mine in Mexico. Thank you, thank you. But let's all type 8888 for those that moderate. Okay, because the moderators make this possible. Thanks for being here. Okay, guys, have a great day. I'll see you soon.